The producer of the Zelda series, and I apologize because I'm going to butcher his name, it's E.G. Anuma, has finally spoken about Tears of the Kingdom. He's been pretty silent since the direct. In fact, completely silent. He hasn't made any public appearances or spoke at all about Tears of the Kingdom since September of last year. Or, I guess, February, if you want to talk about the February Direct. But here's the thing. He's actually opening up a little bit. Probably because we are weeks away from the beginning of the major marketing campaign leading into the launch of the game. And he finally spoke up at the Famitsu Dengeki Game Awards 2022. So these were awards that happened over the weekend. They do this big sort of event, just like the Game Awards does here in the United States. And he went on stage to accept the award for most anticipated game. And of course, since this is the game that won most anticipated Tears of the Kingdom, he wanted to add some of his own words to accepting the award to maybe tease the upcoming game. So finally, we have some real news here that we can speculate on because it came right from the horse's mouth. Now, before we dive into that, I want to remind you we are on our road to 100,000 subscribers, and I would really appreciate if you would just subscribe to the channel. In fact, if we can somehow get to 100K by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, I'll go ahead and just give away a collector's edition of the game. All right, so what did he have to say on stage while accepting the award? Well, this is a translated version, uh, so credit right now I'm giving to Game Explain for providing this, to us anyways, and it says, In the previous title, Breath of the Wild, you were able to experience a new world of Zelda with the freedom to go wherever and do whatever you want. In the sequel, Tears of the Kingdom, the player's free imagination will be filled with new gameplay that will bring about changes to the game world. I think that everyone who voted will feel pleasantly surprised, and I hope you can enjoy the unknown Hyrule as you like. Thank you. So there's two key things that he brings up. One is that the gameplay will bring about changes to the game world. So we all know that there are various things that are different about Hyrule, but some people think there's not enough differences. And maybe that's because the differences come through gameplay. You know, you could argue this is a tease for time travel or something like that, where you travel through time and that gameplay mechanic leads to changes in the world. Maybe there are certain things you do. Uh, if you remember, like, Skyward Sword, we didn't have time travel, but we had, like, the time stones or whatever, and that would unveil things from the past that would change the world. So I'm not saying that those are the mechanics they're going to use. Those are just ones they've used in the past. So... I'm just looking at this and going, damn, 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 this looks like a really, really interesting concept that we could start speculating on. Also, he mentions that it's an unknown Hyrule. I think that is the first time that he's mentioned at all that the changes to Hyrule are so significant that even if you played Breath of the Wild, this Hyrule's unknown. What is unknown about it? Again, maybe this supports the theory of traveling to the past to a Hyrule we've never seen. Maybe this supports a billion different theories about what the heck happened to Hyrule. All I know is telling us the gameplay brings changes to the world. Oh, and that it's an unknown Hyrule for people who play Breath of the Wild. That's what people have been waiting for. Like, if we're going to be in the quote-unquote same Hyrule, then we need to see major changes. Well, if it's suddenly unknown... I would argue that's some pretty major changes. Now, I want to go over some of the other uh, awards that were given out because Nintendo wasn't alone. Game of the Year, by the way, ended up going to Elden Ring like it has pretty much everywhere else. But there were some wins for Nintendos in specific categories. Now, here's one that I didn't really understand. Best Scenario. I'm not really sure how they set that up. It was it was between Heaven Burns, Red Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet took the crown there. Also, there was another win for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for Best Character. Arvin won Best Character uh, for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Interestingly enough, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Kirby from that game was actually up for Best Character. Quite interesting. Best Action Game went to Splatoon 3. Interestingly enough, Kirby was up for that one as well. Best Action Adventure Game went to Sonic Frontiers. So that's interesting. And here's something that's cool. Well, Elden Ring won Game of the Year. 
Xenoblade Chronicles 3 won Best RPG. So Elden Ring wasn't the best in its own category, but it was the best game. That happens, by the way, and sometimes these places want to recognize different games. So I'm glad to see Xenoblade Chronicles 3 getting some love. Obviously, we talked about as well that Zelda won Most Anticipated Game. So you guys let me know uh, what you're thinking about, obviously, these awards. Did they do a good job? You know, I just went through an article on Nintendo uh, life to show you those awards. But what I'm really curious about are obviously the words from the director of the Zelda franchise. Again, he accepted an award for Tears of the Kingdom in person and said this stuff publicly, and we are just being provided translations of that public statement. And I think that this statement is revealing in some ways. It, it doesn't hurt the hype, that's for sure. I think one thing is very obvious about this statement is that the producer of the Zelda series has seen everyone calling this just DLC. He has seen it. He has seen people say it's the same Hyrule, boring. And the fact that his first, you know, public comments that aren't uh, pre-recorded were simply saying, yeah, we want players to feel free with their imagination and be filled with new gameplay that will bring about changes to the game world. And yes, I want you to be surprised and I hope you, that you enjoy the unknown Hyrule. Clearly trying to emphasize that there are major, massive changes to the world of Hyrule and we just haven't seen anything yet. I can't wait for this game to come out. My hype is uncontrolled. I always tell people the hype responsibly, but I know guys, me personally, I'm done hyping responsibly. I've been done for a while. I've been done since the Zelda Direct really, or the lead up to, I call it a Zelda Direct, the <laughs> the February Nintendo Direct. I gotta be careful because we might have a Zelda Direct coming up, but I, I've let my hype responsibly, you know, whole shtick fall off the moment that I figured that Tears of the Kingdom was going to be at that February Direct. So, again, you guys let me know what you're thinking about this down in the comments below. And what changes do you want to see to Hyrule? Like, it's going to be the quote-unquote same Hyrule, but what massive changes could they make that would make you excited to re-explore all over again? Obviously, we've seen some buildings rebuilt in some areas, so that's pretty interesting, some new enemies. But what could they do? Like, they relied heavily on shrines and Korok seeds. What are they going to do this time to make us want to go, hey, we need to see what's over that cliff. We need to go over there. We need to see what's on the other side. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.